Really? Really? I know exactly what you're thinking. That guy in the video right there has some cool looking hair. I know. I know you're thinking it. Hey, I figured new section, new unit. Why not do something different with the do? It'll be different probably for the next video, regardless, whatever. Hey, you saw the essential question. You got it. It is how do we find the volume of a prism? How do we find the volume of a cylinder? That is the essential question. And we just talked about three nice little sections, a nice little unit on finding the surface area of what we call a prism, finding the surface area of a cylinder, finding the surface area of a cone, finding the surface area of a sphere, all that stuff. And remember, surface area was the area, the amount of little square units that you can put on the outside of this particular shape, the whole way around the outside of all of it. That's surface area. This unit is not talking about the surface area. It's actually talking about the inside of this shape. The inside. Look right through it. Do you see it? The inside of it. And the questions, again, are going to ask you what's the volume. So let's write this down in your foldable. The exact definition of volume is this. It doesn't mean you make your voice go louder, you make it go softer. Nice try. In terms of geometry, here's what it is. Volume is the number of cubic units of space contained in a solid. So now we're not talking about the little square units we can attach on the outside of it. We're talking about cubic units. If you think of like a little number cube, a little dice, a little die, sorry, a little number cube that you can put into the shape. It's those little bits of number cubes, whether it be cubic inches, cubic uh, feet, a little bit bigger, cubic yards, cubic miles, that's ridiculously big, but it's the amount of cubic little units that you can put inside of a shape. That is what volume is, and that's the idea for this next unit that we're gonna talk about, okay? So here's the deal, you know this, back to middle school, and actually I'll tell you, it might even be elementary school. I don't remember when you guys learned volume, but here's the deal, when you have a prism like this, you certainly remember, if I asked you even before looking at this slide, if you knew the volume for, for a prism or a rectangular box like this, you'd say, oh yeah, it's length times width times height. And you're absolutely right. You take the length times the width times the height. And that is exactly what it is. By the way, this is a postulate in your book. And it should be going on the foldable that says prism. Okay? So rectangular box, length times width times height. But I want us to think a little bit. Because if we take a prism like this, sure there's a length, there's a width, and there's a height. Absolutely there's a length. Right here's a length, here's the width coming back to me, and the height is up and down. I, I got you, that's very cool. Or you can look at it this way, it doesn't matter. The problem is, what about this guy? Like what's the length, what's the width, what's the height? There isn't one. I mean you got the height, sure that's from, from base to base. We know that, that's the height. But there is not really a distinctive length and a width to it, nor is there something in this um, hexagonal prism. There's, there certainly is a height from base to base again, but there's not a length and there's not a width. So how in the world do we find the volume of this thing? Well, let's kind of get to the idea through, again, my little prism thing here. So length times width. Length times width is nothing more than, sorry, I had to get a marker, is nothing more than this. If you think about it, it's just really the area of this base because the base shape here is just a rectangle. So length times width is just nothing more than the area of the base. And remember, this sections, these sections are denoting the area of the base with a script capital B. So if I think about the length times width as just the area of the base, I can actually replace this entire thing right here, length times width, with just a script B, representing the area of the base. And that is exactly what this next slide, which you already saw, you got a little sneak peek. You're welcome. That's what this actually says. So you have the height, distance from base to base, the height's there, and the area of the base, whatever it is, length times width. If you know that, just plug it in, the area of the base, take it times the height, awesome. You get the area, sorry, you get the volume of that particular prism. That's why this is important because when you talk about this guy, which is right there, or you talk about this guy, which is right there, there is again no length and width. There is certainly is a height. So here's all you gotta find. Find the area of the base. Find the area of the base. If you find the area of the base, and you find the area of the base, awesome. Then just take that times the height. And that's exactly right, excuse me. 
I'm back. So what you have to do is this. How about you just take this away? How about you find the area of the base? How about you find the area of the base? And that's all you have to do. Find the area of the base. Oh, you might need to go back and look at the area formula for a regular hexagon. Oh boy. Or go back and look at the formula for the area of a triangle or an equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle or a right triangle. Those right there, you find the area of that base, take it times the height, and you'll find how many cubic units you can put in this. Find the area of this base, take it times the height, bam, and you'll be able to find out how many, well, how many cubic units you can put into this bad boy. That's exactly what it is. So this guy right here is for theorem 115. It's for the um, volume of a rectangular box, but here's what's cool about it. This is actually also the same theorem. They just changed the number on you, theorem 116, according to your book, and it's the same formula. Find the area of the base. Find the area of the base. So this actually shouldn't say rectangular box. We can extend it now, guys, to this the volume of actually any prism in general. I don't care if it's a triangular prism, a dodecagonal prism, a pentadecagonal prism, it doesn't matter. Find the area of the base, whatever the base is, take it times the height, and volume, baby! You got the volume of that particular prism. That's pretty cool. Now, let's move on to this guy. The old cylinder, it's a little different because holy smoly rollies. If you think about how many cubic units you can put in this thing, well, um, there certainly is a height distance from base to base. But my golly, look through that thing. There is certainly no length and width. There's a height, but no length and width. So I wonder how we find the volume of this. I present to you exactly what you see behind me. It's exactly the same concept because take a look at this. Slide this aside. Here's my cylinder. Here's the base. If I can find the area of this particular base, let me write that in there for you. The area of the base, good old script B. And I take that times the height, that will give me the number of cubic units I can put into this particular solid. Sweet! So this is actually theorem 117, volume of a cylinder. The volume of the cylinder is found by doing area of the base, times the height. Now notice I put the word over here because remember in all cylinders, <laughs> when you're firing all cylinders baby, this baby just moves. Just kidding. It's a little mechanical reference right there if you know what I'm talking about. So if you, <laughs> all cylinders, if you find the area of the base, which by the way this base, oh yeah, the base shape is always a circle. It's what cylinders are. So we can replace this script B with a specific formula pi r squared. That's just a formula for the area of a circle. So here is what you're going to actually see on the PSSA formula sheet for the volume of a cylinder and that is why. Because pi r squared is the same as the area of the base and the cylinder. Take it times height and you got your answer. So I have a question up here, a little example for you that I want you to pause after I give you the idea and then do it. Try it. Master it. Get it right. I'll go over the answer here shortly but after you can keep playing the video, but pause it, try it. So here's my cylinder. The question is this, what's the diameter of the cylinder? If I give you two things, the volume, volume, 128 pi inches squared, that's the volume of it, and the height is eight inches. I want you to find the diameter. Pause the video and let it rip. Good luck. Welcome back, welcome back. Good job, here we go. Did you get it right? We're gonna find out. Let me slide this aside so you don't get a chance to cheat and see the answer. The answer's not here anyways, don't worry. Bam, okay, so here we go. Again, diameter is what we're looking for. Volume is this, height is this. Since it's a cylinder, I'm gonna use this formula, pi r squared, h. And I'm gonna plug into this formula everything that I possibly can that I know. Well. I know the volume, check, I'll put that in here for volume. I know the height, check, I'll put that in here for H. So my goal is to solve for that silly little letter right there. Solve for the radius. Wait, hey, Mr. Moderate, so that's not what it's asking me to find. I got you. It's asking me for the hammer. But if I find the radius, well then by golly, Miss Molly, 
I can take that times two and I'll get my damn, di whoa, I almost swore, sorry. I'll get my diameter, <laughs> sorry, should probably edit that. Okay, so here we go. When I plug this in, the first thing I'll do is this. Let's divide everything by eight because that'll clear this multiplication of eight over there. I'll undo that. I'll divide this by eight. When I divide 128 by eight, that gives me 16 pi. Cool. Pi r squared, well remember, my goal is still to get r by itself. So what's next? Well, I can actually divide everything by pi. That'll undo the multiplication of pi here. So I gotta do it over here. Nice. So that cancels that, that's pretty cool. I'm left with 16 equals r squared. Well, how do I get rid of that little squared? Algebraically, I must undo the operation by square rooting it. I square root both sides. This cancels this. So the square root of 16 is actually plus or minus a four. Now, negative four doesn't make sense again because negative four, you can't have a negative radius length. So you would disregard that. So that means woo, woo, whoop. That means the radius of this cylinder happened to be four inches. But that wasn't the question. Be careful. Go back and look at what I was asking for. It's asking for a diameter. So that just means I take that times two, and there you have it. Yeehaw, great rejoicing. Did you get it? High five Whew. to you. Good job. So there you go. So we're gonna practice these in class, put this stuff on that same foldable flap, which will be cylinder and prism, and we're gonna practice these a lot in class, and you will be able to master the volume of finding volume <laughs> of cylinders and prisms. See you in class, peace.